Hello children, let us start the next part of the lesson. Yesterday we were discussed about the sources of the Harappan civilization. You understood very clearly. The remaining part, in the sense, today we will take origin of the civilization. Origin. If you hear this word origin, what you are going to understand? Origin means the place where it started. That is called origin. That means, for example, yesterday I was telling one word, habitat. Habitat means the place where people they used to settle or live. For example, we are the Bangalore people. Our habitat is Bangalore. So likewise, the origin where the civilization started before. That is called origin. Origin of the civilization. That means very simple to understand where it started exactly. That is an origin. If we come to origin, you see there are two types of origins. One is foreign origin, other is one more indigenous origin. Two types of origins you need to look here. One is foreign origin, one more indigenous origin. You see the words properly. One is foreign origin means what? Which is not belong to our country. That is called by foreign origin. For example, the sources we have taken from other country apart from our country. That is called foreign origin. So one more is the indigenous origin. Indigenous origin means native, our local origin. So let me take first one foreign origin. What is this foreign origin? See, some historians they used to say the Indus Valley civilization or the Harappan civilization that was a foreign source or foreign origin. Some of the historians they used to say so that is indigenous origin. Indigenous means our native origin. So, by this two, one is foreign, other is indigenous. Let me have a look on that. But obviously, the Harappan civilization, according to sources, what archaeologists they produce, that is from indigenous origin. Indigenous is, I already told you, belong to our country. So that is, I already told you yesterday, which is now Sindh and Punjab in Pakistan. The Harappan Mahindwadar, what yesterday we discussed. So, it extended from Sutka Gender extreme west part of Sutka Genda, the site, when we come to the extreme east in our India, that is Alamgirpur near Ganga Yamuna Basin. I tell you, I tell you clearly. So what are the origins, important sites, the civilization started early. So that's why, again let me come back to the foreign origin. So some historians they used to say, so, we brought up or the civilization which starts from foreign. So, by some sources and all. But, archaeological sources played an important role. Yesterday, what we discussed, the remaining parts of the plant or animal or the pieces of building or the pottery. So, many are the inscriptions found in that particular area. So, archaeologists, they are going to take many sources to describe this origin. So, because of that, foreign origin and indigenous origin. When we compare both now, again, I would like to tell you, this is a indigenous origin. Indigenous, after partition, when India and Pakistan gets divided, some parts, no partition, when it gets part, partitioned, no, some parts went to Pakistan. Then some parts of the civilization remained in India. As I already told you, what parts? Sutka Gender. Now, which is west part of Baluchistan. That is not our country. Understand now? If we combine both Sutka Gender and just what I said, Alamgirpur nearby Ganga in my basin, you know now, that is part of India and part of foreign. That means what you are going to understand. That's why I want to conclude. Either which is purely foreign origin or purely indigenous origin. 
no which is a both in the sense today what sites they located the west part of the baluchistan some parts of pakistan then which extends to india just as i said alamgirpur and lothal gujarat you know some areas few more areas if you take map you will come to know that we'll show you a map the areas the civilization which is spreading like a triangular shape triangular we will come to know that exactly we will come to know that how the civilization whether it is rectangular shape or triangular shape means triangular shape you know no? by combining both one is foreign origin other is indian origin if you take the structure pictographical structure no you will be coming to know that that is triangular in shape i will take up the places and all where it started then where it uh, extended and all i'll let you know so that's why i see now you clear about uh, the origins foreign origin and indigenous origin that is native origin again i would like to tell you the sources only playing an important role for example if you come to ashokan period today you know that means ancient days how ashoka ruled so what you know that one iron pillar what he inscribed on the you know that metals are on the stones the rules and regulations he implemented during his period no because of inscriptions we come to know some of the historic parts will come to know through say manuscripts manuscripts means you know the writings on leaves you know palm leaves you know that those days because of lack of paper our historians they used to found manuscripts and inscriptions the simple difference between manuscript and inscription you know that i explained many times so when we come to manuscript and inscriptions further the sources whatever they preserved today also if you go to big museums in that particular state our central level also we have one department called archives a r c h i v e s archives means the place where we need to preserve important things you know that is called an archive the confidential things and all if you go back to british rule many confidential things they used to preserve that is an archive or museum or library so this is a, yesterday i was telling about uh, the records whatever britishers they stored during their rule no today also we used to refer what mark cabbon what lord canning what mount batten what lord wellesley La, what lord hastings warren hastings many governor generals and viceroys they ruled india what the proclamation given by queen victoria from britain everything today also you can easily find because of this sources that is a source unless source we can't speak yesterday also i told you we need to look at the past events by seeing the sources otherwise sometimes we are going to consider the chronological order of events what is a chronological order of event for example if you take chronological order just i am taking from 1947 everybody knows that we got independence 15th august 1947 after 1947 what were the you know no, main you know implementations done by our government or the nationalistic movement we recorded in the ledgers books libraries so that means what we are going to understand 1947 1950 you know so january 26 we officially implemented our constitution then if you come to 1956 or you know 1962 the wars 1965 between china and india pakistan and india that means i am talking about chronological order the placing of events in a third order you know that is called by chronological order so that's why so like that we preserved so the sources from 
day one in the sense when archaeologists they found those forces so now we are utilizing those forces for our for future references and that that's why here when i come to foreign origin and indigenous origin our indian historians also are the other country historians they preserved many things or what we can say the sources for easy implementation of the uh, history so because of that these sources uh, throw light on the indus valley civilization or harappan civilization next i move to extent of civilization what is an extent of civilization now you know that from foreign origin and indigenous origin some places uh, you know where it started now that sites were located now extension that means from where to where these sites extend let me take for example if you come to extent of the civilization here the entire area of the harappan civilization entire area means uh, come let me tell i tell you what is the what is the area which is covered that is 1.3 million square kilometers the entire area let me come back you see the entire area of the harappan civilization 1.3 that means again I, i would like to tell you which is a triangular form what form triangular in shape accounts for about 1.3 million square kilometers that much if you come to east north west and south this much area so the civilization which covered how much i said 1.3 million square kilometers 1.3 million square kilometers now you look at what is an extent of the civilization if you come to the extent of the civilization here i am going to give you a clear cut in the sense you should come to know the extent from where to where it extended and you should know what is that you see the largest area amongst this civilization the places i would like to tell you now sutka genda what is this sutka genda where it located extreme west part of the baluchistan extreme west part of the baluchistan the sutka genda on the sea coast of south baluchistan in bracket i clearly mentioned on the sea coast of south baluchistan suppose if you take indian map you will come to know the directions south east west north you know no. so these directions where the sutka genda located the sea coast of south baluchistan south part of the if you see that map no easily you come to know that what direction it uh, you know located i show you the map so this is one more than that that is in the west the direction what i said now sutka genda where it located west part of the baluchistan then if you come to the alamgirpur where it located in india alamgirpur in india it's located in the upper ganga yamuna dohab dohab means uh, the mouth of the two rivers upper ganga yamuna dohab where the two rivers are going to join now that place is called by dohab dohab means what two so that means so which extends to india also again why i am stressing this point again and again the word sutta genda is not so easy to pronounce uh, remember that's why you need to be very careful that when you are writing the sutta genda which is located on the sea coast of south baluchistan then in the west then when we come to the alamgirpur to the east in india you see upper ganga yamuna dohab in the western up which state it located up up means uttar pradesh you know western dohab in up this is the name then western where it located in the east part of you know that dohab uttar pradesh don't confuse now you understood the west direction that is uttar pradesh when we come to the india that is east extreme east where it located upper ganga yamuna valley then from manda where the place is located manda the name of the place that is in jammu now i am going to the north you see north what you understood now manda is a place which is located in jammu in the north north part to the now i am going to one more that is narmada that is what is this bagat rao bagat rao in narmada yechiri bagat rao in the narmada yechiri yechiri means mouth of the river 
What is the estuary? Mouth of the river is called by Yeshe. When we come to the, you see the place Bhagatram in Narmada, estuary in the south. Again I am repeating you, south where it located? Narmada estuary. The mouth of the river, Narmada estuary, south. Again let me take, now you understood, Sutka Genda in the west. Next, Upper Ganga Yamuna in the east, that is in India. Then from Manda in Jammu and Kashmir to the north. And Bhagatra in the Narmada, that is to the south. That means four directions, north, south, east, west. Four also you understood. So this is what the extent of the Arapan civilization. Extent means up to where. That's why I am telling you. This 1.3 million square kilometer, how it spreads if you take four directions. That is called an extent. Now you have clarity about the extent. Now let me further continue what further I mentioned here. Consequent to the partition of India. This is very important. Before 1947, August 15, you know, when India was not partitioned, no? You know, that was in India, part of India only. But after partition, what happened after partition of India? The main centers of civilization. What are the main centers? Let me tell. These centers you need to remember very carefully. The main centers of civilization after partition, those are that is Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, Chenumudaro, and Sutta Genda. These places again I am stressing you, the students you have to listen carefully. What I am going to tell? Four areas you need to remember. After partition of India, the four areas, centers or sites, what you can say? One was Harappa, other was Mohenjo-daro, then Chanmudaro, then one more Sutka Genda. These were the four main sites after partition of India which went to foreign origins. I think now you understood. Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, Chenmudaro, and Sukka Kenda that you know went to foreign origin, not India. India also we have many sites that we will discuss. If you see the map now, you will be getting clarity that what sites located in India, what sites located in foreign origin. That's why beginning it seems that I gave a, you know, I gave a clarity that what was foreign origin, what was indigenous origin. Now you understood that the extent of the civilization from where to where civilization extended. You know, because important question, you need to know why again and again you may feel bored if I take the same places again. The reason is that the places are not so easy. The two, the below average students, you need to focus more. When I am going to tell the Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, look the spelling, then Chenumudaro and the Sutta Genda. Now you understood two origins. One was foreign, other is indigenous. Then you come to the extent of civilization, the area civilization covered. That also got clear. Now I move to urban planning. This is very very important area. Even though long back, that is yesterday what we discussed, 4000 to 3000 BC, before Christ, when it started, you know, you see, the civilization was advanced. How can you say that? Yesterday I was giving an example that when man started growing crops, you know, for transportation purpose, he started wheel, he invented wheel. By using that wheel, again he constructed the bullock car. By using that bullock car, he used to transport that goods, whatever you know, he produced from one place to other place to sell in the market. So this is what I would like to tell you, the planning is very very important. Whatever the civilization, planning playing important role. Those days also, the people were very clever in making planning. Let me come to the planning, urban planning. Urban means city. You know, no? how city planning? Let me take. If you come to urban cities, no? Urban cities were well-planned cities. Well-planned cities. You see, the two most important urban cities are one was Harappa, you know, Harappa in Montgomery district. You see, here I wrote the name of the districts. Montgomery district. You know, Montgomery district of Punjab and Mohenjo-daro in Larkana district of Sindh. Now both are in Pakistan. 
Again, let me come back to that point. I was telling about Arappan cities. Here I am going to state two main cities. Later the cities grown like uh, anything. So the two most important Arappan cities are Harappa in Montegmari district and uh, <coughs> that is Mandumari district of Punjab and Mohenjo-daro in Lartana district of Sindh. As I tell you, you know now both uh, they located in Pakistan. These were the main two cities where our historians they discovered, they invented many things uh, in that particular area. Why? The reason was that those were the two cities, main cities where the Harappan civilization flourished. The main sources found. Isn't it not? For example, you can't search the things uh, where availability. For example, if you take gold, where gold is available, the geologists uh, they need to search and they used to. These archaeologists and uh, that area, if you search now, we can able to get gold. For example, if you come to Africa, some gold mines are there. If you come to our India, in some states, if you come to Karnataka, KGF, coal or gold fields. Like that, the area where that mineral is available, there only we used to take, uh, you know, no, invention that particular area center. This is what the mineral point of view. If I come to, so the city is, why the historians, they focused mainly on those two areas. One was Harappa, one was mohenjo -Daro. Those were the main two cities, those were the main two cities, you know, no, more sources found by, more sources found by the historians. More sources found by the historians. This is what? One was Harappa, one was mohenjo -Daro. This is a fact what you come to understood now. Moreover, there, two cities are linked by the river Indus. You know, yesterday I was telling the thing that, the two cities are also linked by the river Indus. That is the main reason why we used to call that civilization is Indus Valley Civilization or Harappan Civilization. But children, what I am going to tell you, now you understood about the two main cities, where they are located and are, of course. The districts also I was telling you, be careful when you are going to write those districts and that. Further, one more thing what I would like to tell you, you should come to know why that civilization is called Indus Valley Civilization, because the two cities also linked with the river Indus. That is the main reason why we used to call the civilization is Indus Valley Civilization or one more name for that, the Harappan Civilization. This is the reason. Now you understood that, you know, now, the reason why we call Indus Valley Civilization. This is what the urban planning, urban cities, how they plan. Children, now I move to the main thing because till now what you understood the urban cities, how they plan, how they construct and all. Now you come to know. Now the extension form of the features of the urban planning features. For example, today if you take one city, Bangalore, how the planning is. Some main main areas we have broad roads and all, broad canals and all, you know, no. so the drainage system, everything. But uh, if we come to, you know, no, small cities and all, today also there is no proper planning. But the Arabian cities were well planned. That's why I give an example of Bangalore children. You see, today's planning also, it is not up to the mark. But if you go back to Harappan civilization, that is 3000 BC, 4000 BC, the planning was well planned. That means what you come to know, the Harappan cities were properly planned, well intelligently planned. So this is, I compared the present cities and the Harappan cities. What the archaeologists they found the sources, they recorded the writings, in their writings that Arappan cities were properly well planned cities. Now children, let me take the features of urban planning. Features means the characteristics. If I say how Arappan cities are well planned, you know, you need to know how the characteristics of urban planning. 
By that time you come to know that how the planning was done. So that's why now I go to the features of urban planning are features also called by characteristics. By these points you come to know that how the urban cities, urban planning. Okay. Now I move to the first one. That is first characteristic. What is first characteristic? Each city was divided into two parts. Each city was divided into two parts. What was that? The raised area. Raised area means yesterday I was telling one word called citadel. You know that is called by citadel. Citadel means I already told you yesterday in the sense previous class. What I was telling about citadel? Citadel means the raised area. Suppose if floods come, you know, no, they need to protect those cities from the, you know, the floods. That's why one was raised area that was also called by citadel and the lower town. Lower town means the below. That means now you got an idea that you see each city was divided into two parts. One was raised area that is also called by citadel and one more was the lower town. By this point, what you come to know? That was divided into two parts. The city was divided into two parts. Then I move to second feature of characteristic. The main streets followed a grid pattern. What you understood about grid pattern? You know, for example, there are patterns, circular pattern, rectangular pattern. So here exactly that is grid or rectangular pattern. The main streets followed a grid pattern running from north to south. You see, those days they focused on directions also. North to south. Running from north to south or from east to west. That means, today what we are giving much importance for directions, you know. Those days it seems, by archaeological way, that means, by taking a very equipment planning, they constructed the roads, they constructed the cities. Even they gave importance for directions also. For example, today if you go to construct home, you know, by using our site now, we will see the direction, which is a particular direction which is good for our living, where the ventilation is good, where the, you know, so the light is good. Everything, the way we need to keep or see yeah, windows and all, that we will see particularly. So that's why, again let me come back to the second feature or characteristic. The main streets followed a grid pattern. This is very very important. They will ask you the characteristics of urban planning. You need to, you know, write very clearly that grid pattern running from north to south or from east to west. That grid planning which is running from north to south or east to west. So this is the planning done by the uh, town. Next I move to third characteristic. What was the third plan? The houses at the street corners. You see that? The houses at the street corners were rounded to all, uh, sorry, were rounded to allow carts to pass easily. Children, again I am repeating this point. You see what I was telling? The houses at the street corners were rounded to allow carts to pass. For example, if you take corner houses, they used to construct the roads where the carts allow to pass. That means what? End of the corner of the house, there were the roads where that carts easily they used to pass. Today also, if you come to our, uh, you see, where we uh, live, no? those areas and all, if you assume, no? Some areas are not connected by good roads. You know, the lanes are very congested, where even two-wheeler also can't able to pass. Some areas are very congested. You know, the roads are kacha. Kacha means, you know, there are two types of roads. One is pakka, other is kacha. Or you can say that metal and unmetal roads. Like here, what I would like to state, the houses of the streets, particularly the roads, which was well connected to the cars. Cars means uh, to pass easily. So this is what today we will come to know that the streets also, roads also, they are constructed in a scientific manner. You see, are you understand my point? Even drainages also. This is why we need to appreciate the Arabian people. They were very intelligent. 
those days it seems they used burnt bricks today what we are using red bricks and all that type of burnt bricks they used to construct either it may be citadel or it may be the granary to store that the buildings and all you know no? so very planned manner they constructed this is one then more than that let me come to the fourth characteristic what is that you see house drains emptied what i was telling fourth characteristic house drains emptied all waste water into the street drains you see this is an important area house drains emptied uh, all, all waste water into the street drains house drains means the drain small drains connected to the house or the pipes connect to the house so that drains emptied waste water into the street drains that pipe well connected to the street drains the drainage system what we connected you know just nearby homes today those days also well planned drainage system was there harappan civilization that's why i said the point the house drains which is connected to the road drains that means the streets in the sense yeah, let me come back the street drains this by this point fourth characteristic what to come to know those days they implemented well drainage system also drainage system is very important unless suppose if stark water you know what will happen so the diseases like cholera malaria the mosquitoes used to sit on that uh, waste water which used to spread many diseases because of that we need to keep our surroundings very clean that's why what i like to tell the fourth characteristic when we come to the harappan civilization the house drains well connected to the street drains by this we understood well drainage system also you know is to introduce uh, harappan civilization next i come to fifth characteristic you see the board what is this fifth characteristic the streets cross the main road at right angles what you are going to understand the streets cross the main road at right angles now dividing the city into square or rectangular blocks you see children the streets cross the main road at right angles not in circular right angle i think you might have seen some layouts and all today in right angles how they constructed the roads and all even drainage system and all why they follow this system you know like grid pattern easily the waste matter can flow easily the transport we can just i was giving an example of carts and all how they used to move towards corner you know roads and all this is why to pass very easily that's why the street crossed the main road at right angles right angle 90 degree angles well planned right angles the roads also were constructed step by step you are understanding previous point what you understood well drainage system next what you are going to understand the roads how right angles it used to connect and which is very easy to pass either it may be vehicles or it may be public for our general use they constructed this well planned system so these are the five characteristics of you know urban planning of harappan civilization that's why if you take this five characteristics now even today we can't able to fulfill this characteristics that's why just uh, i was giving an example of bangalore if you go to all other cities of our india so not well planned so that's why proper planning is important i would like to say this is the base what we adopted from the harappan civilization is it not because by seeing that our historians whatever they recorded the archaeologists and all by seeing that today we are constructing the pattern what they followed on that day that means 3000 bc 4000 bc that's why we need to appreciate the harappan people for their you know proper planning of constructing roads constructing drainages you know constructing houses you know houses what i will take up now so till here what you understood features of our characteristics of the urban planning you understood very clear i think children you understood five characteristics now i move to the houses houses you know houses means the characteristics of houses how they connected houses constructed houses what was the planning when they used to construct houses for example if you take today's houses 
just for your reference i am telling you what you find obviously if you see one house kitchen you will be finding you know no one god goddess room you are going to find one store room you are going to find one hall you need to find then the houses are going to construct in a different manner that some of them they used to construct in a duplex duplex manner you know no some of them mansions bungalows some apartments you need to observe today so these are all the features of today's point of view if you come to harappan houses you should come to know what were the characteristics followed by harappan people that's why take look here you see houses part no there are certain characteristics uh, they followed when they constructed houses what were those characteristics as i told you for the urban planning what characteristics they used to maintain no today also you see suppose if you want to construct home no we need to consult engineer because of technical plan and all so the same way long before even there was no technology advanced you know no methods no the people they were manually planned even they were using their skill they used to construct in a advanced manner now i take up first characteristic of the houses you see children here first characteristics what they used to mention first one is that the residential buildings were built according to a set plan according to a set plan residential buildings they have built according to a set plan according to a plan on a high mound high mound means raised area again i am repeating you i said one word called see word word is it called that means high area in order to protect from floods you see for example today also if you visit assam in our india say they constructed houses on heights the reason to protect them from the floods for example excess water come you know no or from tsunamis or from wild animals also you can say for example if you search through net or if you go to assam somebody you might have visited how the houses high what i was telling high mound means high areas to protect them from the floods and all to become safe so that's why the people were very clever arapan people let me come back to the first characteristic again the residential buildings were built according to a set plan plan planned buildings on a high mound means raised area or citadel why they used to construct raised area the reason was that to protect them from the floods children it is clear you understood the first characteristic of houses now i'll take up second characteristic what was that you see there were various size of houses from single room then from single room then went to bigger houses with courtyard up to 12 rooms or wells for this you compare today's with the arapan house planning what you come to know today also we have different sized houses you know today also we have you know big houses like which contains 12 rooms and all today also we have wells today we have you know different type of houses with courtyards and all the same thing you see what again let me come to the second characteristic various size of houses today also various size of houses are there some houses constructed by stones some houses constructed by wood that is masonry stone so like this we used to construct by using cement those days the people they constructed the houses in different sizes which start from single room to the bigger houses like courtyard with 12 rooms courtyard means you might have seen you know no? before constructing they used to plan the houses in front of home no there is a vacant place that means for sitting for chit chatting or for gardening and all they used to leave certain place for good ventilation light you see see the planning of harappan people the same thing we copied and dubbed that's why i'm telling you you know no harappan people by using their self skill they constructed all these things later on those who came some dynasties and all many dynasties ruled you know no after that the kingdoms then 
if you come to the to today's democratic countries and all, they follow the same. What you are going to understand? So, since from the urban planning, we are following the same what urban people they followed. That is the main, what we call, you know, the plan today what we are using to construct the houses and all. What we can say, master plan. Yes, exactly we can say the Arapans master plan today we are using to flourish big big city centre. Isn't it? No, idea is very important. Yesterday I was telling about a small wheel. You know, no, the ancient man even he invented fire also. Isn't it? No, when he was living in the see, jungles or forest, you know, he used to hunt the animals and after hunting he used to you know, no, use that animals by boiling. So, he invented water. So, big, sorry, he invented fire. Because of that, even ancient man also, he was an intelligent. Like that. So, today we are following the same. Whatever Arabian people, our ancient people, they implemented many things for their peaceful living, you know. The same thing today, which we are adopting or implementing. So, second characteristic you understood, there were various size of houses from single room to 12 houses or the wells connected or courtyards and all. This is what second main characteristic. Next I move to third characteristic the houses. What is that? You see if you come to the third characteristic, you see the board. The entrances to the houses were from narrow lanes. What children? The entrances to the houses were from narrow lanes which cut down streets at right angles. You see, understand this point properly. So the entrances to the houses were from narrow lanes which cut the streets at right angles. You see, exactly where you are going to understand entrance. For the entrances of the houses, they constructed narrow lanes. Easily we can pass it to the houses. We can drive it to the houses. Even when rainy season and the water easily can flow. You know, that's why I was telling the grid system of the rectangular system what they followed. When they used to construct houses, even streets and the easy movement. For example, today's position you see, just I was telling, so even big, big trucks and all, you know, some big, big vehicles, they can't able to take turn during you know, when they used to pass nearby small lanes and all, nearby congested roads and all, by keeping for the future plan, urban people, even the entrances of the houses also, narrow lanes which cut the streets at right angles, 90 degree angles, planned way, they cut the streets accordingly, from one house to other house. That means, what you are going, what is running in your mind? The that much, you know, planned roads construction, house construction, drainage construction, everything done from the Arapan people. This is an area where we need to appreciate them. Children, next fourth characteristic I'll come. You see, the kitchen was placed in a sheltered corner. Kitchen. Now I'm taking a kitchen. Sheltered corner of the courtyard and the ground floor contain store rooms and well chambers. You see, again let me come back to the fourth characteristic. Just I was telling, suppose today if we construct home, no, we used to follow the vastu. Today you see, many astrologers are there to suggest vastu, or some many gurujis are there, those who are expertise in vastu and all, so, the people they used to consult them before constructing home. But those days, there was no vastu. That means people they don't aware of vastu. But you see, again I would like to state the fourth characteristic. The kitchen was placed in a sheltered corner of the courtyard. Today also you see the kitchen. You know, no. we are going to, where kitchen should be there only we are going to construct. For the proper ventilation, proper air, proper light. So, in that manner, the people of Arapan civilization, they constructed just nearby the courtyard. What was the purpose of constructing kitchen nearby the courtyard? The main reason was that to allow the free air, you know, pollute free air, even light. 
Isn't it enough? Because of that, they constructed to the, you know, courtyard, in the sense, corner of the courtyard, and the ground floor contained store room. If I take store room with well chambers, you know, I need to appreciate them. I think today we are going to store the food grains in a bag, gunny bags and all you might have. Those days, the people they constructed store room. See an idea? You know, we are going to surprise by seeing this, uh, you know, the idea of store room, what they constructed. Today also, we implemented it. We are constructing store rooms to store surplus food grains for our consumption, what we used to keep at home. Those days it seems that idea of store room come to the mind of Arapan people. That's why again and again I am telling you, we need to appreciate this Arapan civilization. Why you know, even store room also placed in a proper manner, the ground floor. Now, before, I think uh, you might have seen our old people and all, they used to construct uh, store rooms and all. Then, that is today further advanced. We are going to also advance, otherwise we are going to, you know, use the gunny bags to store the food grains and all. Today, I think you might have seen, you know, no, I, I need to tell an extra information here, I think you might have heard about the public distribution system or the PDS, what you used to say. So, our food grains, today what the government is going to distribute from ration shops to the people, you know, that food grains are you know, that idea taken from the Harappan civilization. Where we are going to store food grains today? Food Corporation of India Godowns. That is also called by FCI. FCI means Food Corporation of India. For example, farmers if they produce food grains, surplus food grains we need to preserve. Isn't it not for the future use? That's why we located some big FCI Godowns across the country. Obviously, you know that where to where food grains are going to, to, go, going to be supplied from surplus area to deficit areas. Isn't it now? That's why we are going to supply food grains today from the godowns only. Why I added this point, you know, that was an idea of Arapan civilization. Today's kitchen was an idea. Today's drainage was an idea. Today's construction plan of building was an idea. Today's streets construction, what we used to follow, an idea from Arapan civilization. You see to that. So this is why the Arapan civilization, we need to appreciate. Now, I think I was in fourth characteristic, the kitchen also, even courtyard also, even the storeroom also, well with chambers, also the Arapan civilization's contribution for us. Then last and final characteristic, what I used to say, that is fifth one. The houses were made of brick. Houses were made of brick. Brick means what? You know, today what we use burnt bricks and all. That is called. You see children, those days it seems, the people of Harappan civilization, they used burnt bricks. You know, not without burnt. Burnt bricks means, you know, Today also we are constructing houses by using burnt bricks only, the red bricks and all. So those days it seems by using the burnt bricks, they constructed houses. That is one area. Then wood also. Today you see furniture. You know, for doors, for windows and all, we are using wood. Those days also the people of Arapan civilization, they were using wood. Even the bricks, even the stones. Further, each house had doors. You see the idea? Each house has doors. Those days seems. Even windows. Each house has windows. Even ventilators. Today what we used to maintain? For example, without window, without door. Today we can't construct houses. Isn't it not? The same idea we follow today because of Arapan people. That's why I used to tell, doors and windows opened on the side of the streets. You see, this idea also we need to appreciate. Why they used to open doors and windows, sir? Opened the side of the streets only, you see, for the best ventilation, for, for the light, for the air, not, not towards main road. You see, in that area also the people were very clever, not uh, just besides main road. 
Why they need to construct it? Uh, you know, the, they need to introduce the windows uh, towards main road. The reason was that maybe noise or sound pollution, what we can say. Maybe, you know, for the dust particles and uh, to avoid those, they constructed or introduced the doors and windows you know, on the side of the streets. That means sub streets. That means <coughs> by seeing the urban planning to the houses, what they constructed, no? children, you need to be appreciate again the urban, uh, sorry, urban planning also as well as the house planning also of the urban civilization. That is well versed, well planned. Children, after seeing this uh, features of urban planning and uh, the characteristics of houses, you come to know the Harappan people were well advanced. Well advanced in the sense, uh, today what we are following, you know, we brought those ideas from the arch archaeologists, our historians. That's why we need to be appreciate these people in that area. The Harappan civilization also, the well versed, well planned civilization that shone light on the coming generations. Today what we are following. So this is why the civilization plays an important role in our daily life. If I come to other areas under, for example, business and the trade of Harappan civilization, you know, the growing of food grains and the important the areas what they gave much preference and all. Let us see. The further we will discuss about it. Before going to that, I would like to take the similarities between Harappan civilization and Mohenjo-daro. That means yesterday I was telling you about two things. When I started the lesson, I said about two areas. The cities I said two main cities. One was Harappa, other was Mohenjo-daro. I said both also now situated in Pakistan. So the similarities, what similarities are there if you compare both the Arabian civilization and Mohenjo-daro civilization. For that uh, similarities, we need to see. Similarities means you know that same. For example, if you compare Harappa or you compare Mohenjo-daro, what similar things you find? So almost uh, both Harappa and uh, see the uh, Mohenjo-daro civilizations are similar. That means using of uh, that food grains or production of food grains or the making of town planning or the making of houses or the people, livelihood, how they lived by that time. You know, whatever that archaeologists and historians they recorded, you know, that similarities we will take up by next session of our lesson. Because still we need to take a lighter few things, not only the features of urban planning, not only houses. Further, we need to discuss about the civilization by taking some pictorial diagrams and all. Let us see. So that's why I said the similarities between and the trade between the Arabian civilization, the other countries, how they developed our other abroad countries and all. Everything we will take up by next session of our lesson. Children, I think you might have understood, uh, understood the today's session. If you have any doubts, no, you let us, uh, you know, to come to take it to my notice. So, next session, the doubts uh, which you find while you are going to read, uh, so you record and you send it, I am going to reply. Thank you, children.